worship you, oh God. We adore you, oh God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you excited to be in the presence of the Lord? Yes. Yes, I am excited. Not because I'm taking the Lord, because God is giving me understanding. One thing is to speak. And that thing to know that God is speaking to you. So that is what is more important to me. Because I realize that as I speak, I'm picking up some things that well, so, um, in myself I say, wow, where does that come from? Can it be God? Amen. Amen. So that is why it is important for us to always be in tune, in tune with the Lord. Because God is always doing something new. And we want to be part of what God is doing. And that is the joy of serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, where did I stop last time? I then went to Hebrews 12, but um, before then, I think I read, um, is it, um, oh, um, Deuteronomy 18. So let's just go there now, just to recap, especially when he spoke about the fact that it will send another prophet. I think that's what I want from there. Really. Um, Deuteronomy 18, 18. And 19. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. And I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. And we say that that was Jesus that was talking about. Amen. Do we agree with that? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to then we now go to uh, I think the book of John. Let's go to chapter 5 first. Let's start from 19. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than this will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raised the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, and uh, as they honor the Father, Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. And then what I want to hear from here is from what we had from the children of me, you hear now Jesus saying that he's now come in the name of the Father. Isn't that so? The Father has said that and whatever he says the Father doing is what he is doing. Not only that God, our Father has given the authority to give life as Father gives life. Amen. Amen. So we can see here the prophet mm -hmm. that God was talking about. Now, there's something I mentioned earlier that I want to, I think, 39 now, the same chapter, verse 39. Yeah. 
You search the scripture. Oh, it's, it's, it's annoying me. <laughs> Let's face it that way completely. Let me face. Let me face that <laughs> completely. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 39 again. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. Remember what Jesus said the other time that Father has given you sorry, what we read earlier that Father has given you what? To give eternal life to whom he will. Isn't that so? Yes. Uh -huh. That's what we read in and, and, and John 5, the, the first part I read just now. But now, 39, I say, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. Amen. And it is they that bear witness about me. What did we read in um, Deuteronomy? In reference to what God is doing now. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. He's saying that Jesus said to them that those are the scriptures that give reference to me. And you can see clearly that in Deuteronomy 18, you see 18, 18 or 19, that what um, Moses told the people that a prophet is coming. Just like Moses, who will do what? Listen to him. Listen to him. And Jesus is saying to them here, yeah, because they refuse to listen to him. They read the scriptures. Like we're doing. We read the scriptures. Day in, day out. But he's saying that but you refuse to come to me who is eternal life himself. So, what was he saying? We have to come to relationship. Relationship is so, is so important to God. It's not leaving us on our own to figure things out. So, he wants us to come to him, not just reading the scripture. It is good to read the scripture. That's what we're supposed to do. But let's come to him. He is the one who wrote the scripture. He is the one who knows what is meant by what he wrote there. He is our teacher. Amen. Amen. So he is to give us divine guidance. So reading the scripture itself, as good as it is, is not enough. Even it's enough. We're all reading the Bible here, most of us. Why are things you're not reading and praying about? Why are they not happening? We need to ask ourselves questions. Isn't that so? But he wants us to come. Reading the Bible is good. We have to meditate on the word of God. It's good. All this will help us when we're even meditating. But fall short of relationship. The key to all the you know what? We must catch a vision that communion is God's deepest desire for mankind. Did we hear that? Do we hear that? What did I say last? God desire for mankind. Why did he make you and me? To worship God. To show what is God. We said it made it on. You see? God's desire is to have that deep communion with us so that we can show forth his glory. 
that what Jesus died for, the reward is to see his children doing well. Isn't that so? That will be the glory of God. As it is now, the enemy is beating us down. And we don't have a clue what to do. But God has already made everything plain for each and every one of us in this world. So that is why we are here today to begin that communion with God. We've been doing it the way we say, you know, I read the Bible when I hear what God, um, the word of God, word, to hear the word of God. I just think it's a literary meaning. That's me. I thought, okay, when I read the word, I'm hearing the word of God. I'm hearing the word of God. That's what I used to think. So I thought I was doing the right thing. Until one day when God opened my eyes. It's not just reading my word. It is communion with me. It is coming to me, having that relationship, not one way relationship that we think we will know him, we think we will love him. But loving God is not just doing what we want. Loving God is obedience to his word. Is it that so? Yes. But without all, listen to what he has to say, you can't obey his word. We can't love as we're supposed to love. That was why Paul prayed in Ephesians 3. It's not unheard knowledge. It's not just reading it. It's when you are in deep relation with who is love himself that you become like love. Or you become love yourself, not like. So that is the experience. We are, we are reading the word of God. We are trying our best, but we are missing the experience of meeting our God. That's what we've been talking about all along. Isn't that so? That's what we see that we've been talking about. We are not experiencing God, the love of God. We sing it in song. But more than that, we're not yielding to the love of God. So, laying that foundation. Amen? Amen. So you call that foundation since this morning? Yes. Laying that foundation where everything came from. The story where it where it began in the middle, where the people of God rejected hearing the voice of God, until now that Jesus said that you have to come to me, you need to hear me, not just read about me. That was what was telling the Pharisees here. Not just read about me. The scripture testifies of me. You've read it. Here I am. Come that you may have life. So now we're going to go to the scripture. The Habakkuk. Chapter 2. 1 to 3. At this stage, if you have questions on what we have so far, please. This is the time to kind of, uh, you know, say something now before we move on. Amen? No question. Do we understand? Run out have water. Praise 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Habakkuk, I'm using ESV version. Verses 1 to 3. We've read this in the church so many times. We're going to read it again. Amen. Okay. I'm reading, using ESV. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we following the um, the word of God? Yes. Praise God. Are we there? I will take my stand at my wash post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaints. Let's go back again. And I want to have understanding of this now. For the children are here. Praise God. Amen. Let's set it down, children. Let's set it down. Amen. Amen. And I read again. But let them come in. Let them come in. Let them come in. Praise God. That's okay. Let's sit here. Let's sit. Let's sit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's now concentrate now back again. Children, please try and follow as well. God will give you the wisdom. Amen. 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 So Habakkuk 2. I mean, you should have told me about it because we, we, it's, it's a scripture for the year, isn't it? Okay. And I read it. I will stand, oh, I will take my stand at my wash post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Then two, and the Lord answered me, write the vision that it may, it, that it, that it plain, that make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. What does that mean? The word of God is infallible. The word of God is infallible. The word of God cannot lie. The word of God will come to past. We can bank on that. No shaking. Assurance. You know, assurance. Many of us have insurance for so many things. But this is sure banker. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> <laughs> this one called sure banker is certain he cannot lie even though it seems as if it's you know it tires wait it will not because it will come to pass so if God has given you those words now you think of it if you go to God and he gave you words and say, look, this is what I'm going to do. This is what's going to happen. Even no matter what you go through, even no matter what persecution you go through, even no matter what situation may seem right now, you know, beyond reasonable doubt, 
that that situation is temporary because the word of God will come. Is that so? Yes. Well, what if you don't hear the word? What if you don't know what's going to happen and the children of God? You see where we are punishing ourselves sometimes. Because we think we have prayed. But what did he say? What did he say? I think he got something to say with something that's so important to you. Do you think it's not important to him? We see what is happening, how we're doing things. And we think that we're handing it over to God. And we're not hearing from him. But if he gives you the words, uh -uh, no matter what I go through, I know that my redeemer leave it. Is it that so? Yes. yes. So let's look at it again. I will take my stand at my wash post. That is wash post. What does that mean? I will station myself on the tower. What does that mean? Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Watchful. Be alert. Be alert. Oh, this is good. That's it. So you yeah, said something one time. So you realize that it is not us giving God what to do. You remember that? That is God giving us the vision. You see, we like to write vision, what I want. You remember when we started this? I said it, I mentioned it. It's not you rushing to write. Wait upon the Lord. It is God who is to give you the vision that he has for you. How have we been doing it? Let us be honest with ourselves. Write what I want, isn't it? What I want. Not what he wants. My plan. My plan, my desire. Isn't that how we'll be doing it? You see now, this man said, I will wait. I don't know what he's going to say. I don't know what his plan is. I will wait to receive instructions. I will wait to receive the plans that he has for me. If he gives you that plan, it's going to come to pass. Amen. If you write the plan, it's according to the flesh. How I want it. Do you see any different? So he wants us to move from us writing the plan ourselves and to wait on him to give us the plan. Because the plan will work. Amen. Amen. So I will stand on my God post. I will still myself. I will go to my place where I know my name. That's how we shall pray all over. Some say um, guard post. Some say rampart, if I'm right. Yes. Uh -huh. What is that? It's something that they build on the city wall that soldier will be watching his enemy coming. Is that an analogy? Can we see what the prophet wrote? Because when you stand on that high, you can see what's coming from afar. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? So he said, are we Stand at my wash post in my prayer closet where I pray. 
where I still myself. No noise. No anything but myself and my God alone. I will station myself on the tower. That's the tower we're talking about where you can see clearly because you need to see. Let's look, and look at Psalm 62 5. I'm not going to open it. Please open it for us. Ayo, please go. Psalm 62, verse 5. What does it say? Amen. Amen. For God alone, oh my soul, wait in. You see? For my hope is. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Because you know that he has to give me this man. He has to talk to me. He's my father. I have relationship with him. He's not going to leave me desolate. He's not going to forsake me because he has a plan. Because he said that I know the plans that I have for you. Isn't that so? If God knows the plan that he has for us, why are you drawing up your plan? If he has given you the blueprint, that's fine. I know the plan that I have for you. The plans of good and not of evil. The plans not to harm you, but to bring you to an expected place. Do you know the expected place? Who knows it? <laughs> Michael said, Help I like that, Michael. That's good. <laughs> but you see, it's, 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 that's what it's listening. You see, I know the plan that I have for you. And he's the one who knows the plans. He knows the end, the beginning, the middle, and everything. So he said that I'm going to guide you. I'm going to lead you. We're going to do it together until you get to that place. Amen. That is good. But that's not the way we've been doing it. And that's the problem we have, beloved. And I want to change that. Okay, let's move to the second verse. I'm not fed with that first verse now. And look out to see what it will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. I'm saying I will keep watch and see. What does that mean? What are you looking for? You're looking for what God wants to show you. He says, I will look out and see. Don't forget that you're on the top, you're in the prayer closet where you can see things, where God will show you things. So God is able to give you vision. God to is going to make you a visionary. How many of us know that God likes stories? Isn't that so? Look at the gospel. Isn't that so? Stories, big pictures. Isn't that so? Hello? Yes, sir. Stories paint pictures. So when you hear a story, you can you can just think of it what it means. Why? Because we remember stories. Even our children at Sunday school, don't they? So stories are good. Everything, most of the things that Jesus did was a parable, except to the disciples. When he wants to treat them. So, what's the thing? Look, you have pictures of things that God will reveal to you. So, you came here today and said, It's also like a picture, isn't that so? That God revealed to him. 
Back to her. <laughs> Hey, I know my wife. I know I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My wife. Ah, you don't know what I see here sometimes when I'm here. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> sometimes I don't want to look at myself when I'm talking. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yes, I do. I know. Amen. Amen. So you see what we're talking about now? As you're looking, what does it want to show you? But you are concentrating on who? Jesus. Amen. You're watching. Who do you think we come? Who do you think we give the vision? Jesus. So you, you set your face onto him as a flint. As a flint. What's a flint? Not turning here and there, just straight ahead, gazing on Jesus, the altar, and the perfecter of our faith. You're watching what is he going to say to me or what is he going to show me? Because it may come in different ways. Isn't that so? That's what you're washing for. That's what at the wash tower when you're praying, it said, wash and pray. Many of us miss that wash and pray. We thought it's something else. You're praying, you wash for the enemies. Enemy come when you pray. Who are you praying to? Is it not God? Misplaced priorities. Wash and pray because why your deliverer is there. It's there, Holy Spirit is there with you. And that was one of the reasons I said, Look, look, we need to do certain things. The other time when we say oh, those who have not known God, we need to know that why we can walk with God. Because without knowing God and working with God, you cannot receive from Him. Yes, God can re reveal himself to anybody out of sovereignty. Isn't that so? Yes. He has revealed himself to, um, to Muslim clerics. He has received him um, revealed himself to, um, to Jewish, um, what do you call them? Um, to, the, to the Jews, to anybody, uh, that, even to Hades. And they came to the same knowledge of Christ Jesus. Does God reveal himself to you? He can do that is his own act of that's why I said that God can do anything. He's not bound by any law. Is he? He is the law himself. So don't forget that he died for the world, not just for few people. And it knows the heart of everyone. Amen. Amen. So you can see that you're washing and you're praying. You're looking at what God saying to me. And don't forget that we are talking of your spirit, man. Not with your physical eyes. With your spiritual eyes, that you can begin to see things in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, let's quickly look at well, Hebrews 12 2. Hebrews 12 2 for that and see what um, Hebrews 12 2. Amen. Amen. Looking to Jesus, I said it we focus on who? On Jesus. Looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endures the cross, despising the shame, 
and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So what are we, who are we looking at? Jesus. Who are we focusing our attention at? Jesus. Is it to any man? No. To Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ alone. That's who we are looking at. That's who we are focusing our attention at. You are not focusing, you are guessing, you are, deliberate, you are deliberately focusing on Jesus. You see, and again, not just only what, some people focus on, on what Jesus did for them on the cross. Especially when it comes to asking for forgiveness of sin. And you focus on that, man, you'll be amazed what he did on the cross. You'll be amazed what God can do for us. Amen. Amen. And we need to know that. Okay, I will get that. Don't let me run ahead. So when we are washing in prayer, we are looking, what's he going to say to me? That's what he said. Hey, I'm washing and looking at what God will say to me. You are waiting in anticipation. You know that my God will come. Isn't that so? Otherwise, why are you waiting? If you have doubt, it won't happen. If you have doubt, it won't happen because doubt is fear. Fear negates faith. Everything we do is in faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to second now. And the Lord answered me. Write the vision down. I'm sorry. Sorry, I uh, missed one. Um, I will look out on what we say to my website. That is yeah, so, um, okay, yes, we'll look out, that's another thing, that's just wash, and see what it will say to me. Okay, I think that's the one I missed. What it will say to me, you're expecting, is it that true? You're expecting that it will say something. And because of your expectancy and, and you're waiting for him, in truth and in spirit, he will reveal himself. Amen. Mm -hmm. So with that now, let's look at John 7, 37, 39. I know we don't go through this so many times. John 7, 37, 39. John 7, 37, 39. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Amen. Okay. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. What is that river of living water? Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit now? In us. So we have rivers of living water in us. Yes. Why is the Holy Spirit? Okay. Why is the Holy Spirit water? It could be life. Okay, you say it could have been what? I, I know, I'm not saying where it is. I don't know where it is. Why you I think it's in the scripture. Okay. Now, this is said about the spirit whom those who believe in him were to receive. Did you hear that? Huh? Are you there? 
Toby, did you see that now? Okay. And now, this is said about the spirits whom those who believe in him were to receive, for as yet the, script, the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay? Yeah. So, he's talking about the Holy Spirit because he's the one who is with us. That is why we say God with us, the hope of glory. Amen. Because God is in us. His spirit is in, in us. As the spirit is in us, God is in us. Amen. So you can see now that he's there to help us. Don't forget. He's the one who knows what the heart of God. Isn't that so? Holy Spirit is the one who help us in our prayers. Isn't that so? Because we don't know how to pray. So, he is one who knows the things of God. Amen. So, the Spirit of God knows the things of God. And our own Spirit is in us. So, that is why our spirit will be in tune with the Holy Spirit who knows the things of God. You know, Jesus said that he will not speak of himself. When the Holy Spirit speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks like Jesus. Isn't that so? He doesn't speak of himself that I'm going to be speaking to you. It's God speaking to us. So it, Jesus said, He will not speak of himself. He will declare to you what is mine. Are, are we listening? So Holy Spirit is the one who will declare the things of God to us. Is that clear? So when we pray, look at this way I look at it. He's the one who us to pray. Isn't that so? When we pray, and Holy Spirit is helping us, and He says to the Father, Yes, He deserves it. Give it to Him. And God says, yes. Okay, give it. Once you say, yes, have it. It's yours. You see, that's the way I think it's happening. Because what the Bible says. Am I clear? Okay. Because of what the Bible says about prayers. That we don't know how to pray. That Holy Spirit make intercession for us with groaning that cannot be Altered. So, when we pray, we are in partnership with God. Who knows what God has for us? Because He is God, and it's in us. Why is it in us? Amen. To do what? Don't be tired. If you think you're tired, what do you think of me then? Okay, I did. Yes. It's one who knows the things of God. What God has given to us. So as we come in with him, we are coming with God who is with us and who is able to reveal or get to us what God wants to give us. That's what Jesus said. That he will, he will, um, sorry. All this will do what? It will reveal things of God to us. And it's the one who knows what we need. He knows what the Father has for us. Don't forget, I know the thought that I have towards you. So he knows. And he wants to help us. And we are making him dominant. And the Bible said, 
the Holy Spirit you know, is jealous, jealously waiting. Why? Because we are neglecting him too much. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So what you just said, I that when you are praying, you said, uh, Holy Spirit, yes, I know you supposed to say Holy Spirit, but now the way you're saying it, it sounds like you don't mention Jesus, you mention Holy Spirit. Okay. Yes. We mentioned anyone, we mentioned God, we mentioned Holy Spirit, we mentioned Jesus. Huh? Yeah. Is it that so? Yeah. We know that He is here. Like the song we were singing yesterday Holy Spirit, move me now. Was it? Did you see that? You see? And if we sing that, it will come. Is it that so? You see, Trinity, three in one. Amen. Amen. They work together yes. for a common purpose. And that's why God wants us to work together for a common purpose. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Two, and the Lord answer me. Write the vision, make it plain on the tablet, so that he may run who reads it. What's he saying? He was waiting. He was watching, looking, and now God now said something. I want you to write it down, what I'm going to say to you. I want to write the vision down. I want to write it down, the plan that I'm having for you. I want you to know that I know what you need more than what you think you need. You will be asking for money, but telling you, I want to give you wisdom to make money. If you're asking for fish and they want to teach you how to fish. You see, he's all wise, all knowing, all surpassing God. So, this prayer model now, as you go to him, you want to hear him and you use this in prayer. You know, just like when you pray, and of course, you have to worship God and, and, you know, you have to do all those things. And as you do this in his presence, using all these models now, and God will speak. And when he speaks, you write it down. That's how we have our Bible that we have today. Isn't that so? How do you think we have the Bible? Look at it. Moses, he wrote about Adam and Eve. Was he there? Who told him? Not only about Adam and Eve, but the son of Adam. And Isaac about go and sacrifices and everything. And, and, and it wasn't there. That's the work of the Holy Spirit who is with us. That's what God wants to do in our lives. Deep things that most people couldn't have even talked about. He revealed it to him. Why? Because he loved God and worked with God. Let 
the God the vision. Another example is Deuteronomy 17, 18, which we've gone through before. Deuteronomy 17, 18. What does it say? There's no meaning 17. I know we didn't do 17, we did 18 and 19 and 20. Okay. There's no meaning 17, 18. <clears throat> 17, 18. Okay. And when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself in a book a copy of the law approved by the Levitical priest. I was talking about the person who will be the um, the priest, like Aaron, aha, that all the kings that they will have, they will write down the books so that they will not forget. What does the Lord want to say? He said that make it plain on tablet, so that he may run who reads it. So he's saying that when you write it down, so that it won't confuse you. So Lord, I say, what is it? I didn't. I, and I and I do some knowledge church at all. Sometimes I write some things and I, and I look at what is this? I couldn't even remember what I wrote because it wasn't plain enough. I was rushing. So you see, God has made everything plain to us. Amen. Amen. So, and He wants us to walk with what He has given us so that what it may be well with us. I can give you so many examples. Of those who have from God. John in Revelation. He was in the land of Patmos. We know that, don't we? And what happened? And he was there alone. Why was he on the land in the land on the land of Patmos in the first place? Because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was banished. They tried to fry him in the oil and it wasn't burning. They said, oh, this one is not a human being. So they banished him on that land, um, island of Patmos. So open that wild animals would devour him. Because they couldn't do anything to him. Because he had divine protection from God. So while he was there, him alone with God. So he has no choice to be in the spirits, to seek God. Because when you know you are in the presence of God, no enemy can come near you. Is it that so? Yes. How did he survive it? We need to think of all these things. How did he survive it? Because God was with him. So as was and and and, 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 and as he was he was in the spirit. And God and he said that oh, now that he was in the spirit, he had a voice behind us. He looked back. And it was something wonderful that God gave a message to the seven churches and so many other revelations. When he was caught up in heaven because of his love for God. Amen. And this John was the one that always leaned on the bosom of Jesus Christ when he was alive. They will always lean on him. You know what they call him? Apostle of love. That's what they call John. And John, not John the Baptist, John the Apostles. He was the one who wanted to call fire down. We, we said it, was it this morning? Yes. He wanted to call fire down. Look how God transformed him. He became Apostles of love. So, God wants to radically for his purpose change our lives. 
if we allow him. The question is, will you? Will you? So we're just going to practice something now, what I've just said, because of time. I didn't even know time has gone this long. We're going to practice it. Now, I don't have pen, I don't have paper, but you all have phones here, don't you? Okay. You have phone, so if you have notes, it's better. Or you can make your phone to be silent when you're typing, uh, the better. So what we're going to do is this. Um, some of us have we've done it before, but we're still going to do it. Is that okay? All right. And I want everyone to participate. Amen. Amen. Just like the scripture says in this Habakkuk, we're going to use the Habakkuk example now. Take up your listing. Where you read the note, we're going to write on. Take it. The first thing is this. We know that God loves us, isn't that so? Amen. And God wants to reveal deeper and better things to us. This is a greater work than what he did that we will do. And he wants to use us. So I want to say to God that you love him. I want to write it down. Write a love letter to God. I want everyone to participate. You're going to write it down from your heart. We'll be talking about our hearts now. I want everyone to participate. If the children can, better. I want to write a love letter to God from your heart. We must all do it. I don't want you to think it in your head. Do you love God? Can you express your love to God? Every one of us, I want to, I'm going to give us about five minutes now. Love him. Tell him how much you love him. Express yourself to him. So be pleased to it. And I want everyone to concentrate. Kenny, where are you Okay, my friend. Ah, you know, come on, use paper here. Somebody give me paper, please. Uh, time is going. Come on, come on, Kenny. Yeah, you have papers. Come on. Please. Just, just write from your heart. What you write is yours. This, this is solemn time now. This solemn period. It's you and God now. Thank you. 
drinks water. Please, no side talk, please. The, you know, I said a prayer is a dialogue. So as you are writing this letter to God, God is going to respond to you. So otherwise, you must take it serious. Says that out of our inner most things are flow of rivers of living water. So when God speaks, it's going to be spontaneous, it's going to flow from within you, it's not going to flow from outside. We said earlier on that it is your spirit that's regenerated, it's your spirit that comes from God, and when God speaks, it's going to speak to your spirit. Amen. Amen. God is going to speak to your spirit. So that's why we always say that we need to be still and just concentrate. We're going to do that now, but just complete your love letter to God. And I'm sure that God will respond back to your letter to him. Just make sure that it is from your heart. That's very important. You know, um, we have had our God love us so much that he left his throne in heaven. He became man to die for us that we, that he may restore that relationship back that we must first in the Garden of Eden and second the Israelites when they do not want God to speak to them. And then God said that I will send another prophet. I will send a prophet. Him, this time around, you have to listen to what he says. And that prophet then was Jesus. And God is here with us. Amen. So just write what you feel from your heart. Express yourself to your father. Amen. So like I say, you know, when God speaks to your spirit, you will know. And in fact, and they say that God has been speaking to us, I would think maybe this is me. We don't take it serious. Because we don't know. What we don't know, we don't know. Are we done? Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love towards us. We know that you love us. And we know that you sent your son to die for us at Calvary. And that is why we are here today. No one can bring all of us together except you because of your love. That you love us so much that you truly want to meet with us. And you want us to hear you speak to us. Lord, your word has been spoken. And when you know that you are not man that has to lie, neither are you the son of man that has to repent of what you have declared. Lord, our prayer tonight, O oh God, is that you open the eye of our understanding. Amen. Lord, remove every scale, Lord, that may be hindering or from seeing or any, uh, um, any what's or special blocking that may be blocking our ears, that's not allowing the ears of our spirit to hear from you. Lord, today, as we submit ourselves, we believe you are here. We believe you are no respect of any person. And we believe that you will move in our midst. Amen. So we ask you, Lord, as your children have written a love letter to you from their hearts, Lord, we pray that you respond. Amen. Lord, respond. Show them how much you love them individually. Lord, speak to their hearts. Lord, heighten their hearts. Let their heart, oh God, Father, come above their flesh Amen. that they may know that you are a true God. Lord, this we ask and we believe that we receive in the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, we are going to use these four keys as we discuss here. The first one, if you want to look at Habakkuk again, I will stand. That means I will stand at my post, my God posts. Still, I will wait and watch with my spiritual eyes what he will say to me. Amen. Amen. So as you watch, and you, what are you watching for? What when he comes, is he going to speak? Is he going to give you a vision? So all this I want us to use. Then as he speaks to you, give you a vision, write down. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's just concentrate on him now. Let's focus our attention on Jesus Christ, the author and the perfect of our faith. Now let's just think about him. Think about him. Think about him in the story of the Bible as he was teaching Martha and Mary and their brother. And Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus. I can sit down at the feet of Jesus and listen to me. What he has to say to me. Is it that so? Yes. That means you can put yourself in. See Jesus walking on the water. And Peter said, No, ask me to come. And he says, Come. I have your back. Or is he at the well? When Jesus was talking to that woman, the Samaritan woman, you can put yourself there and say, Lord, I'm here at the well. Speak to me. And that's what he says to you. will come as a spontaneous from your heart, not from your head, from your heart.
Don't doubt, is this this or not? If you doubt, you don't receive from God. Jesus said, let this thought also be in me that was in Christ Jesus. You will know that thought. Is it right or is it wrong? Write it down. God will respond back to your love letter. We true now. Amen. 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 Now, as an act of faith, I'm going to call for you to come out and say what God says to you and read it out. Amen. Amen. Now, this is where we are learning here now. Amen. Amen. So, because God has said something to you and you want to share it with us what God said to you. This is just the beginning. Amen. So, who wants to come first before I go? From the back? We are all going to do it anyway. We may do some today, but we will continue tomorrow. Because this is important. Amen. Sister Fumi, do you have anything? Don't just let do. Don't worry. What do you think God says back to you? So letter, what no, what God says back to you. Okay. We know your letter is a personal, but what God says to you? What did he say to you? So um the response I got said, Oh, you feel liar. I love you and have always loved you from your conception till now. I am a great God and wonders are in the palm of my hands. Lean on me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But, uh, do you, do you have anything for us? Yes, sir. Thank you. Kenny, stop your friend yourself. I love you, son. And you know I'm always there. I would never leave or forsake you. 
Many a times I'm there, but you're always still busy. Just like I said to you, you need to continually spend time in my presence. Amen. Isn't that for God? Please. Penny. Don't worry. No, just come. You're still finished. Okay. Esther. You didn't say anything. Okay. Um, what about you? Danny. Don't worry. Come, Danny. Come, come. David, you follow. You didn't get anything. We're going to remain here until all of you are going to get something. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it that way. Until when you get something. Because we are here for a purpose. The rest we go and we'll repay. God just said, I love you, I'm happy you're here, and time will help. Okay, Joseph. Huh? They get it. Um, we are going to see you from time. Maybe until tomorrow. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, Michael, do you have something? No, I don't. Did you? Come. Yes. It's very important. So come, come. You have to come. You have to come. The reason is this. This is something new. You understand me? We want to make sure we're on the right path. Does that make sense? It just says you're welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're welcome. Amen. 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 Okay, Bobby. No, no, you have to come here. Otherwise, if you don't hide anything, we're going to stay here. We all have to. We are here for that purpose. There's nothing secretive in what God has revealed to us. Is it? It's for our own edification. He said along the lines of just um, let go and heal. I love you. Roughly, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we're going to stay here, man. Don't be No? Stay here. Ah, okay. What are you? When I go back, uh, read us follow. I love you, son. I will never leave you or forsake you. You are precious to me. Amen. 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 But what you don't do, don't copy other people. What it says to you is personal. Yeah. And there's a reason why I said that to you. Amen. Read that name. Oh, to be, oh, to be. Okay, Alia. Come. Do you hear anything? What is this back to you? Maybe it's easy. Okay, when it's easy, don't worry. Go away. Okay, are you ready? No, don't worry. No. Alia. Okay. Tayo. No, just come here. There's something important about this. Not only that you be encourage yourself, it will encourage the rest. Isn't that so? Uh, you just said, be patient. I have good plans for you. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Okay. Do you know who's next? And you follow, man. <laughs> huh? Follow, come on. Are you looking back? <laughs> follow the next time. <laughs> I was given a Bible scripture on Yes, and yes, one, yes. It's John 15, 4 to 5. Mm -hmm. It says, remain in me and I'll remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit alone, but must remain in the vine. Yes. In the same way, you cannot produce fruit alone, but must remain in me. Yes. And it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Mm -hmm. If any remain in me and I remain in them, they produce much fruit. Mm -hmm. But without me, they can do nothing. Right. That's what we're talking about. Isn't that so? Yes. Remaining in him. That's when we get much fruit. Yes. Come on. Amen. Um, Amen. So, actually, um, I feel like the Lord says to me just before we, we even started this, um, I was praying. I was thinking that the Lord, you know, as we come close to the Lord, He grants us the, heart, the desires of our heart. I feel like, but I feel like what the Lord was says that it's the Lord grants the desires of His will. And if we're truly in Him, shall not these plans of the Lord and what the Lord wants, shall they not also be for us that we love it as well? And should it not be for our greater good that the plans of the Lord is what prospers and not the plans of our hearts? Mm -hmm. And then um, at the end, like, when I kneel down, like, I just felt like what God is saying to me is just to keep on seeking it. And that's it. You're doing well. Amen. Okay, Sister Arunola. Mommy, change your look cool after that. I'll forever love you. I rescued you from physical death. There is highly purpose that no one else can feel. Yes. I have all comparable love for you. Mm -hmm. I will deliver you. Yes. I love you. Mm -hmm. I forever love you. Mm -hmm. I promise for God for my life. Mm -hmm. He has gone a plan for my life. Yes. Regardless of my current situation, mm -hmm. I can walk out through it to prosper me. Yes. And give me the next step. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I stay together. Amen. 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 In response to my love letter, I express my love to God. And I told him I love you, Heavenly Father. And I thank you very much for your loving kindness and mercy towards me and my family over these years. And I ended by saying, thank you, Heavenly Father, once again. I love you so much, and I await to hear from you. Amen. And the Spirit of God told me that I love you, my darling daughter. And it took me to Psalm 46, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, reminding me of his love towards me. And he says to me, My daughter, be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the health. Yes. Okay. I'm a teacher. Mama Aziza. Okay, this is the um, voice of God. Let me say we should put on the it should be tires. This is what the spirit tells him. He said, He loves me with everlasting love. He should never doubt it. That is closer to me than my father. Mm -hmm. It's always me. Amen. Amen. I said that um, he loves me. And he said that um, I should keep trying to put my head into it very And he said that I should keep my family close. And it's always like a thing. God spoke to me through Isaiah 43, 18 to 21. Said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yes. Where is Mr. Bosom? 
Come now. By the mountain. Fire of the mountain. So you get ready after I was. Give you grace and glory. Um, walk with me. Amen. 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 Now, when you hear from God, if you continue in that world, you begin to open up yourself. Isn't that so? Yes, sir. What we can do here, what we can do is to put the direction. I know. I know. What we can do is to point the direction and you now follow through. That's what Jesus did for us. Amen. Amen. I know. Amen. Um, God spoke to me through diverse ways, and one of the things that God said to me was the song I was playing there. Uh, well, I'm just going to read what God said to me. Um, after I might have read my love letter, and God said, I promise you some love for you, I said to it. Mm-hmm. Yes and amen. amen. You are special, you need to me. I will seek me clearly, love me dearly, and follow me more nearly at all times, and I shall direct your path. Amen. I am the door that leads to doors forevermore. Mm-hmm. It is well with you, my son. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Yeah. You see, God knows each and every one of us. Isn't that so? Mm-hmm. So the word that God will give you is what you will need. It's what you will need. It's not for somebody else, it's for you. It's God is unique. We are unique before God. That's why it doesn't make us the same. And in his uniqueness, he wants to reveal himself to us. Amen. Amen. So, and, and we're going to continue in this in Jesus' name. Amen. But, beloved, don't let it end here. If there's anything else, don't let it end here. Amen. Amen. Before you go to bed, when you wake up, what does it have for you today? We just started. Isn't that so? But more than that, that is a share of love because you wrote a love letter and you responded. Amen. Amen. So, in prayer, what do you want to ask? In fact, you ask the Lord, what do you have for me today? You get there in Jesus' name. Amen. When you see, it's one step at a time. And God knows that we're doing this. Amen. Even in the midst of us here together, we say, pick up what God is saying to us. How much more will you be alone with Him? God knows that we're using this to teach ourselves. You understand me? So, but He, he wants more than this. It's not just one minute. You see, the river flows. Wherever the river reaches, what does it do? It brings healing. It brings refreshment. You understand me? And the river wants to flow in you and within you to every part of you so that you may receive what it has for you. And, and that's the bottom line of it. The love of God. Amen. Amen. We're going to share the grace now. We're going to end it. And those who have not had, we, we need to have a word. Yes, Amen. Not that you're doing something wrong. Yes,
Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the song that God gave the church the meant his love for us. That's it. I love you. I love you. 